today may have been the deadliest day yet for Turkish troops in Operation Olive Branch. State media report that seven Turkish soldiers were killed near a... Friend. Five of the deaths came when a Turkish tank was destroyed by a missile. Turkey launched its offensive more than two weeks ago in an effort to oust the Kurdish YPG. This video purports to be of Kurdish forces destroying a Turkish tank north of Friend. We have not been able to independently verify it. And Turkey considers the YPG terrorists, but they've been a key U.S. ally in the fight against ISIS. Turkey warns Kurdish YPG forces will pay for soldiers' deaths. By Kelly Murray, CNN. Updated 0947, GMT, 1747 HKT, February 4, 2018. CNN, Turkey's Prime Minister warned that Kurdish YPG forces will pay twice as much following the deaths of seven Turkish soldiers in Syria's Afrin province. Prime Minister Bin Ali Yildirim made the threat in a tweet Saturday, Turkey's state media said, which marked Turkey's deadliest day in its military operation dubbed Operation Olive Branch in northern Syria. Turkish forces entered the Afrin area in an attempt to drive U.S.-backed Syrian Kurdish YPG militia from the area last month. Five Turkish soldiers were killed when a tank was destroyed by a missile in Sheikh Haruz, northeast of Afrin, Turkish state media reported. Footage of the attack, released by the militia's media center, showed a speck of light flying across a field, hurling toward a distant target. Moments later, a tank explodes in a powerful ball of orange flames. Turkish armed forces said a sixth soldier was killed near the border town of Kiles. And another died in an undisclosed location fighting militia forces, Anadolu reported. Operation Olive Branch Turkey launched Operation Olive Branch on January 20 with the aim of ending the U.S. allied militia control of Afrin and the surrounding region along the Syrian Turkish border. Turkey has long wanted to establish a safe zone, a 19-mile-wide strip of land in Syria along the border that Turkey helps control. In Ankara's eyes, Syrian Kurds are virtually indistinguishable from Kurdish separatists in Turkey, a group it has long considered terrorists. The Kurdish YPG control a large chunk of northern Syria. So a safe zone would create a buffer along the border. The risk to U.S. relations Turkey's high-stakes incursion in Afrin risks inflaming tensions even further with its NATO ally, the U.S., which is funding the very group Turkey is trying to defeat, the Kurdish YPG, in the fight against ISIS. Shortly after their assault began, Turkish forces said they had killed 260 Kurdish and ISIS fighters in the region. The claim can't be independently verified. And CNN has no indication there are ISIS fighters in the area that Turkey is fighting. Speaking with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan by phone, U.S. President Donald Trump talked tough saying Turkey's Operation Olive Branch, targeting the U.S.-backed Kurdish fighters, risked undercutting shared goals in Syria, according to the White House. Trump warned Erdogan against escalating military action in the region. Turkish officials immediately disputed that account of the call, saying the two leaders simply exchanged views on the situation. Erdogan has also slammed the U.S. plan to back a border protection force for Kurds in northern Syria in an effort to train and equip them to keep ISIS from coming back in. Calling the effort, building an army of terror, according to Turkish state media. Turkish presidential spokesman Ibrahim Kalin told CNN their operation isn't against the Kurds of Afrin or Syria. 
This is an operation against a terrorist network that claims to represent the Kurds, which is far from the truth, he said. Kalin cited Amnesty International in pointing out that the PYD, YPG has committed war crimes by raising villages and forcibly removing local communities from their native lands. He said the operation aims to remedy the situation and facilitate the return of Syrian refugees to their country. The primary goal of the operation is to clear Syrian territories of all terrorist groups, he explained. Saying Turkey has fought against ISIS and cooperated with its allies in eliminating ISIS terrorists. It is deadly wrong to think that the PKK does not pose a threat to Western countries and therefore should be seen as Turkey's problem, CNN's Johnny Hallam contributed to this report. had killed 260 Kurdish and ISIS fighters in the region. The claim can't be independently verified. And CNN has no indication there are ISIS fighters in the area that Turkey is fighting. Speaking with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan by phone, U.S. President Donald Trump talked tough saying Turkey's Operation Olive Branch, targeting the U.S.-backed Kurdish fighters, risked undercutting shared goals in Syria, according to the White House. Trump warned Erdogan against escalating military action in the region. Turkish officials immediately disputed that account of the call, saying the two leaders simply exchanged views on the situation. Erdogan has also slammed the U.S. plan to back a border protection force for Kurds in northern Syria in an effort to train and equip them to keep ISIS from coming back in. Calling the effort, building an army of terror, according to Turkish state media. Turkish presidential spokesman Ibrahim Kalin told CNN their operation isn't against the Kurds of Afrin or Syria. This is an operation against a terrorist network that claims to represent the Kurds, which is far from the truth, he said. Kalin cited Amnesty International in pointing out that the PYD, YPG has committed war crimes by raising villages and forcibly removing local communities from their native lands. He said the operation aims to remedy the situation and facilitate the return of Syrian refugees to their country. The primary goal of the operation is to clear Syrian territories of all terrorist groups, he explained. Saying Turkey has fought against ISIS and cooperated with its allies in eliminating ISIS terrorists. It is deadly wrong to think that the PKK does not pose a threat to Western countries and therefore should be seen as Turkey's problem, CNN's Johnny Hallam contributed to this report. a terrorist network that claims to represent the Kurds, which is far from the truth, he said. Kalin cited Amnesty International in pointing out that the PYD, YPG has committed war crimes by raising villages and forcibly removing local communities from their native lands. He said the operation aims to remedy the situation and facilitate the return of Syrian refugees to their country. The primary goal of the operation is to clear Syrian territories of all terrorist groups, he explained. Saying Turkey has fought against ISIS and cooperated with its allies in eliminating ISIS terrorists. It is deadly wrong to think that the PKK does not pose a threat to Western countries and therefore should be seen as Turkey's problem, CNN's Johnny Hallam contributed to this report. saying Turkey has fought against ISIS and cooperated with its allies in eliminating ISIS terrorists. 
It is deadly wrong to think that the PKK does not pose a threat to Western countries and therefore should be seen as Turkey's problem, CNN's Johnny Hallam contributed to this report. CNN's Johnny Hallam contributed to this report. is quite rural. Now this is one of the outermost perimeters of territory controlled by the Turkish-backed Free Syrian Army rebels. They do control this town, but then if you look up to the hills, you can see some of what we are told are the YPG fighting positions where they do have snipers uh, in place that have been taking shots into this area. There also was a few hours before we arrived a mortar that landed, uh, we were told, inside that small village. Now we have been hearing also throughout the course of our time here the sound of artillery being fired. That of course originating from Turkey. The actual on the ground advance itself is happening in other directions. What you see right there, that is the Turkish city of Kilis. There's also a refugee camp. And one of the things that the Turkish government is hoping to accomplish is to push the YPG back further enough so that there is no longer a threat posed directly to Turkey from artillery or mortars that they have been firing. The other thing that the government hopes to accomplish is expanding this buffer zone expanding this safe zone so that at least perhaps a portion of the 3.5 million Syrian refugees that are currently inside Turkey can begin thinking about coming home. Arwa Damon, CNN, Yazibak, Syria. 12 people, a blanket on the floor, the only comfort in the winter darkness, as they crouch, waiting for danger to pass. CNN has obtained exclusive video from inside Afrin. It shows how the threat of Turkish airstrikes has driven families from across the Kurdish enclave into caves and basements. Many here say they've lost family members in the last two weeks since Turkey launched its offensive. And below ground, sorrow hangs in the stale subterranean air. <laughs> We are poor people. My husband was killed. We have no place to go. What are we going to do?
Eleven-year-old Yasmin says she lost her father last week, a fighter defending their village. My dad was killed and me and my mum and my brothers are all here in the cave. It is really dark here, so we are scared because it is really noisy. They are conducting airstrikes. What did we do to them? We are just kids. Why is this our fault? This is what they are running from. CNN video shows how airstrikes and artillery have shattered the streets. Turkey sees the Kurds as a threat, as Kurdish leaders have long sought an independent Kurdish state in the region. Our homes are destroyed. This Erdogan is dropping bombs on us. We lost our homes, our children. Nothing is left. Why would this happen to us? The general manager of this hospital in Afrin City says they're overwhelmed with the number of wounded. On one ward, a mother mourns her 10-year-old boy, wailing, how will I ever live without you? Doctors say he was fatally injured by Turkish bombing in the city of Taranudi. Kurdish officials say scores of civilians have been killed and hundreds injured by the Turkish military so far, though CNN can't independently confirm the exact death toll. In a statement to CNN, the Turkish government said they're only targeting terrorists and that sensitivity is shown to avoid damage to civilians and innocent people and to the environment. The UN estimates 16,000 people have been displaced across Afrin and says some civilians are being prevented from leaving by local authorities. With no escape, people are left to find warmth and shelter anywhere they can. Paula Garani, CNN. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It looks like it's a very dangerous situation. You have uh, launched Operation Olive Branch, and it's directly confronting American-backed forces and the U.S. presence there. How can this be happening? Well, we've been raising this issue of supporting PYD, YPG by the Americans in the name of fighting uh, ISIS or Daesh for months now, in fact, for almost years. Uh, and we haven't really received any convincing answers or positive results from uh, either the American side or from uh, you know, other countries in the region. The reason we had to take this action is precisely because of our national security along our border. Uh, there have been a number of attacks, in fact, in total over the last year or so, 700 attacks from uh, this Afrin region controlled by PYD, YPG. And, uh, and there have been cross-border uh, operations uh, on both sides, etc. So we have raised this issue a number of times. And, and, and at the end of the day, of course, uh, you know, we had to take action to protect our border. And uh, as you know, P, uh, PYD and YPG is PKK Syria branch and PKK is at, listed as a terrorist organization in both Europe and the United States. And we cannot let this kind of a terror organization establishing some kind of a autonomy or state structure uh, right along our border. So the acronyms you're talking about refer to the names of these Kurdish groups, some of which are backed by the United States. Um, but is this going to pit two NATO allies against each other? I mean, what measures are you taking if any, to make sure that you don't enter a hot war with your major NATO ally, the United States? Well, first of all, Americans are not in the Afrin region. They are mostly in the Menbij region, which is in the, to the east of the Euphrates River. We are talking about the western side of the country, right across the Turkish border. Number two, of course, uh, we coordinate this uh, operations, all the branch. Uh, we have briefed our allies. We have briefed uh, the United Nations, uh, P5 countries. Our president just spoke to uh, President Macron. He will be speaking to President Putin. Uh, he will also be speaking to President uh, Trump tomorrow. Um, and uh, we've been doing this uh, you know, around the diplomatic circles to make sure that everybody understands what we are doing. So we are being uh, transparent uh, with this because you know, our national security is at stake. Let me also underline that. Kirstian, this is not an operation against the Kurds of Afrin or Syria. This is an operation against a terrorist network that claims to represent the Kurds, uh, but that's just far from the truth because there are thousands of Kurds who do not subscribe to uh, PKK's or PYD's Marxist-Leninist ideology. Okay. And you have the, one of the greatest ironies in modern history 
where uh, American government uh, has chosen a Marxist-Leninist organization as its ally in Syria. Well, that's, that's the point. So obviously the Americans are very aware of your sensitivities with these various Kurdish groups, but they say that you also have a joint, uh, a joint desire to beat ISIS, and these were the forces that the Americans uh, armed in order for them to beat ISIS so they didn't have to send too many Americans into harm's way. This is what Ash Carter, the former defense secretary, told me about this situation. We had to protect ourselves, and now we have to sustain the victory. And that is, means letting the people who live there rule in a way that is better than ISIS ruling. Now, these Kurds actually live there. So the idea that they should govern is, uh, I think, uh, unassailable. I think we do owe it to Turkey as a NATO ally uh, to make sure that, to the extent we can, that those Kurds that are part of that Syrian force that we've helped don't turn their means mm. against Turkey, which, after all, is a NATO friend and a NATO ally. So you can see that he understands your sensitivities, but these are the fighters, these are the successful fighters, and they're the residents there. Is there anything the U.S. can do to reassure you that these people won't turn their guns or whatever on you, Turkey? Well, uh, there is one concrete action that the American government can and should take, and it is to collect all the weapons that they have given to PYD, YPG over the last two years, because the, the reason or justification for providing all that military support to PYD, YPG, was the fight against ISIS or Daesh. And uh, they told us many times that once Daesh threat is eliminated, there won't be any more support, military support to PYD, YPG. Now ISIS is eliminated, but unfortunately, uh, support or military aid, uh, equipment, ammunition, weaponry, etc., uh, continues to go to uh, this PYD, YPG uh, groups there. So the question is, why are you still supporting them? Uh, because the Daesh threat is not there anymore. How uh, are you going to make sure that they're not going to use these weapons against us or against uh, you know, other Syrians like Arabs uh, or Turkmen or uh, you know, other groups? The main force that seems to benefit from this NATO on NATO problem here between you and the United States is Russia. How do you feel about that? If you look at the end result, I mean, cosmetically, it looks like, you know, Russia will want to manipulate this, but we haven't seen Russians really going that way uh, in any way. Uh, in fact, this has worked uh, on the Syria issue, and we will continue to work, obviously, with the Russians, but we are a NATO ally, and we would like to see our, uh, you know, NATO allies, primarily the United States, obviously, stop supporting a group that has been targeting Turkey for okay. 30 years or so. So, uh, so finally, let me ask you to comment. I, I wonder what President Erdogan feels about President Trump. It's co quoted, you remember, on the sidelines of the UNGA in September, President Trump said that President Erdogan has become a friend of mine. I think now we're as close as we've ever been, he said. Does the president, your president, share those views, especially at this moment? Well, they obviously uh, have a good relationship. They develop a good chemistry, and they will be. Uh, they have talked many times. They've talked many times, and they've met in person a number of times, and they will be talking again. Uh, but there are key issues that we have to resolve really at the leadership level. I think the American-Turkish relationship is just too important, um, too significant uh, to be damaged or shadowed by you know groups like PKK, PYD, etc. We have greater strategic interests in the region if we work together uh, for the region, for ourselves, and obviously for the Americans. Ibrahim Khalil, presidential spokesman, thanks for joining us from Ankara tonight. Thank you.